Okay. A rectangle is to be inscribed in a semicircle of radius 2. What is the largest area the rectangle can have and what are its dimensions or dimensions? Okay, so let's look at what's going on. You have a rectangle that's inscribed inside a semicircle. Okay, so if you let x be this length from 0 to x, what is this length? Well, that's the y value, but what is the y value of a semicircle? First of all, the equation of a semicircle is x squared plus y squared equal to 4, and then when you solve for y, you get plus or minus the square root of, right, when you transpose that to the other side, 4 minus x squared, but because it's a semicircle, you do not include the negative. Okay, so this is x and that's y, so what is the, it says here, what is the largest area of the rectangle? So if you let x be, uh, so what is the length then of this rectangle? It's going to be 2x is the length, okay? And the width is y, but y is equal to what? Square root of 4 minus x squared. So if we want to, our goal is to maximize the area, which is length times width, you're gonna, you are really maximizing 2x times the width. Why is it 2x? Because one x and another x. So 2x plus times the width. Square root of 4 minus x squared. So do we need to do anything else? No, because a is already a function of one variable. The area is a function of half of the length. So let's go ahead and um, take the first derivative, a prime. So how do you take the first derivative? You have two functions here that are multiplied to each other. One is 2x, the other is the square root of 4 minus x squared. So let's take the first derivative, so it's 2 times the square root of 4 minus x squared, okay, plus you take 2x, and then write this as what? This is 4 minus x squared to a half, so it's going to be times 1 half, 4 minus x squared, okay, to the negative 1 half, then minus 2x. Where does the minus 2x come from? When you take the derivative of the inside, applying chain rule. So let's see, that cancels out. So what we've got so far is 2 times the square root of 4 minus x squared minus, okay, you've got that canceled out, so minus 2 um, x squared, right? Because look, you've got x here and another x there. So it's going to be, and there's the minus, that's how this came from. And then whole thing divided by the square root of 4 minus x squared. Okay? So we set that equal to 0. Now if we take the common denominator, what are we looking at? Okay, let's recall what are we trying to, um, to solve. So you have 2 square root of 4 minus x squared minus 2x squared over 1 over the square root of 4 minus x squared, set it equal to 0. So what's the common denominator? 4 minus x squared, okay? So if that, when you multiply, you're going to get 2 times 4 minus x squared, and there's another 2 here. So let's go ahead and pull that out as well. So you have minus x squared. Okay, so I already pulled out the 2, got the common denominator, that's why the radical is removed. Okay, and so we've got 2 times 4 minus 2x squared, whole thing divided by 4 minus x squared equal to 0. Okay, if we set the denominator 0, you're going to get um, x equal to 2, right? But the thing is, if x is equal to 2, well, let's see. Does that, would that make sense in this 
problem. Well, let, let's look at the figure. All right, see, you can't use x equal to 2 because that means you won't be able to form a rectangle. It's just a flat line. So we gotta, we, we won't, it's not necessary to let the denominator be equal to 0 because that will be, mean x is equal to 2. So what I'm saying is, okay, our two critical numbers would be, all right, so if we set 2 times 4 minus 2x squared to 0, you're going to get that cancels out, divide both sides by 2. And let's see. From here, you're going to get um, 4 minus 2x squared is 0, and 4 is equal to 2x squared. So divide both sides by 2, you get x squared is equal to 2, therefore x is equal to square root of 2. Now remember, this could be plus or minus, but we're looking at the length, so I only included the uh, x equal to 2, square root of 2. So when we say plus or minus, we just choose the positive. All right, and then for the denominator, okay, so this is for the numerator, right? For the denominator, you have square root of 4 minus x squared equal to 0, which means, you know, after, I mean, it's, it's easier if we just let that be x squared will be 4, so x is equal to 2, again, plus or minus, but we just take the positive length. Like I said, the values of x should be between 0 and 2. So this is, we don't have to test for a critical number for this one. Instead, we just test for this problem. All right, so you've got the first derivative, okay, equal to this. So what is the second derivative? Well, it's really very tedious if we want to do the second derivative. So what we can do now is just test for the first derivative, sign change of the first derivative. Okay, let's continue. The two critical numbers are square root of 2 and 2 and we're just going to test square root of 2. Um, what do we do now? Well, what we're going to do is use the first derivative test. We're going to use the first derivative test, okay, on x equal to square root of 2 by testing the sign of the first derivative. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Okay, our critical uh, point is at x equal to square root of 2. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and write 2 here. And then we take um, and say zeros here. All right, so our, our, we want to find a test point. So let me take 1 as a test point and then say here use square root of 3. Okay, remember this is like this is square root of 2, square root of 3, and the next is square root of 4. So those, is, those are our test points. So if you plug in 1 into the first derivative, so let me go ahead and partition this. That way we can check the sign of the first derivative of a. So when x when x is equal to 1, a prime of 1 would be, this whole thing would be 4 minus 2, so that's positive, divided by the, uh, the square root of 4 minus 1, which is square root of 3, so that's again positive. So positive over positive is positive, which tells us that um, the function is increasing. And then we got a 0 here with the derivative zero, uh, being 0. So now let's take what is f a prime of square root of 3. So if you substitute again, you've got a 4 minus when this is uh, equal to square root of 3, that's going to be 6, so 4 minus 6 is negative, divided by 4 minus the square root of 3 squared is going to be 3, so that's 4 minus 1 over 1, that's positive. So negative over positive is negative. Okay, so it's decreasing. So we have uh, seen that with a positive derivative 0 and a negative derivative, that tells us that we have a local maximum occurring at x equal to square root of 2. Therefore, x equal to square root of 2 maximizes the 
area of the rectangle. Okay. Right. Now let's go back to the question. So it says, what is the length and what is the width? So the length would therefore be um, twice of x, so that's 2 square root of x. And what is the width? Well, here the width would be 4 minus, so it's going to be y, which is equal to the square root of 4 minus the square root of 2, whole thing squared. That gives us square root of 2, because that's 4 minus 2. So this is the, oops. Okay, so these are the dimensions or dimensions of the rectangle that will maximize the area of this rectangle that's inscribed inside the semicircle, where the length is 2x, so 2 times square root of 2, and the width is y, which is square root of 2. Okay, and then we, it says here, what is the largest area the rectangle can have? So our area, therefore, would now be length times width, so that's equal to 2 square root of 2 times the width square root of 2, so you get 4 square units. Okay.